Hello, hope you are doing well. So yeah, thought I just had to do a quick reaction video to the OpenAI Spring update and the release of their GPT-40 models. That was pretty interesting, right? Uh, if you watch it, I think you just watch it in replay if you didn't catch it, but basically uh, they are introducing a new flagship model that can reason across audio, vision and text in real time. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I'm a big fan of uh, the audio part of ChatGPT. I use it a lot to try to learn stuff. So yeah, pretty excited for me. But of course we have to test it out first. O stands for Omni, a step towards much more natural human computer interaction. Uh, kind of what I found most interesting was kind of the low latency. So this is an average of 320 milliseconds, uh, similar to a human response time in conversation. So that is a big deal. That is a big deal because, yeah, as you know on this channel, we have been working on creating low latency. Uh, it would be really cool if we can get this kind of latency on a simple API call. Uh, I'm very excited for that. And they also showed that we are getting 50% cheaper API cost for GPT-40. Uh, and it's especially better at vision and audio understanding compared to existing models. So. I went ahead, I wrote a little script, so we're actually gonna test out the image functionality. We're gonna put in some images, ask it about it, use GPT-40 to analyze the images, use GPT-40 to actually get a response from the images we put in, this description. Uh, because we can't try out audio yet, because I had a look at the documentation here, you can see accepting text or images input and outputting text. So we don't have that available yet. That's a shame because I really wanted to try that to today, but uh, hopefully soon. So it's supposed to be two times faster. Yeah, 50% cheaper and it has a hundred and I think it was 128k token context window. I think that's fine uh, for most use cases, right? And uh, I wanted to just take a quick look at my notes here. So I took some votes notes during the live stream. So yeah, we can see that uh, there were some voice interruptions that looks to be working pretty good. Uh, yeah, voice input and output. Uh, there were some emotions. So actually in the live stream, they tried to change the emotions of the, the voice in real time. So I thought that looked pretty interesting. We're going to test that, of course, later. And latency looks pretty good. Tone adjustment, yeah, that's kind of like test emotions. And I think it actually could sing the output. So I thought that was interesting. And yeah, voice input choices. So I think you can kind of, if you say something in like a sad voice, I think it kind of picks up on that. We will have to test that out later, of course. And of course, images and video input. We're going to do a quick test uh, on paint here. Just going to paint something and we're going to try it out. And I thought also the desktop app could be interesting to just have in the background, right? When we are actually... When you're working on some code or something, just have your the desktop app from OpenAI in the background. You can just talk to it. Uh, I really like the app one uh, on my iPhone, so I use that a lot. So, yeah, some pretty interesting stuff here. I'm not going to spend too much time today uh, going through every single feature. I, I guess a lot of other YouTube channels is, or something are going to do that, Twitter maybe. Uh, but I think we're going to come back when we have more practical use cases. So that's probably going to be on Wednesday. I'm going to come up with something cool. And yeah, there's a bunch of evaluations here. Uh, it looks pretty strong overall. You can see it's pretty much on top here. And another thing I just wanted to mention is that they said that they're going to bring this GPT-40 to all free users. I think that's a big deal, to be honest, because remember, when everyone gets access to this, I think that's a... Yeah, I think that's kind of more important now that I think about it and uh, during the live stream because I was looking out for API stuff. And <laughs> but now that I think about it, if everyone gets access to this during the free version, that is a pretty big deal considering like uh, yeah, Claude, Anthropic yeah, and of course the other development. Now, if you have a free GPT-40, Llama 3, I don't know. So there's something there that's going to be interesting to hear about in the next few days, what people think about the free version of GPT-40. And what do you get when you pay? I didn't really catch anything around that. But like I said, I haven't done any research now. So I think we're just going to go in through some testing. So that was kind of my first reactions. So yeah, I could be wrong on some things, but I haven't done. I just wanted to give my first uh, reaction here. So uh, 
I just wanted to show you kind of the the thing I created here. Uh, yeah, I added some audio, but we can't use that, I found out, so we're not going to be able to test that. So let me just show you here. So uh, I put in these images from kind of my previous videos. So this is the images from the mixture of models, right? Uh, the three architectures and kind of the intro slide. So I think we're going to feed all of these slides into the image uh, analyzer from G with GPT-40. And we're going to use our GPT-40 chat to kind of give us answers. So let's just do uh, image description, feed in all the image description, explain the system for the image description of both structured format and print out the final explanation. So yeah, let's just run this, I think. So I guess uh, there's no streaming now, but we can also check, check the speed now in kind of real time here. Uh, I thought a bit interesting. And uh, Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can see analysis for uh, 27.png. So this is kind of our first slide. Mixture of models. Looks pretty strong. We have the three architectures. Here we have image 28 PNG. We get a summary of each image. Peasants. Yeah, this looks pretty good. 29. Uh, components. So this is the duopoly architecture. And I guess the first one was the king architecture. Here is the democracy architecture. And yeah, I think, I think this is pretty quick. And here's kind of our final explanation. System overview. Uh, let's zoom in a bit. Mixture of models. Uh, leverage has the wisdom of a crowd principle to achieve optimal solutions by using multiple AI models. Yeah, that's pretty good. Three different architectures. Perfect. And here it kind of explains each architecture. So we have a user query. Yeah, this looks strong. Very strong. I just wanted to see if there was some summary here. Yeah, so I like the format. It kind of explained every single architecture here in kind of the same format. So that's pretty cool. The mixture of model system utilizes multiple AI models to generate diverse responses to user query. Depending on architecture used, these responses are either refined by the leading model, the king, and discussed by co-founder models, the duopoly, and voted on by the models themselves, the democracy. This approach ensures that the final response is well-rounded and deeply considered, benefiting from the strengths of multiple models. Yeah, that's a good answer because... Remember, this is not something it has seen before, right? So this is brand new stuff. And I think it did a very good job in analyzing all images. So we're not going to spend any more time on this now because, of course, we're going to do this in the future. So I just wanted to run through a quick script. So yeah, seems to be working pretty good. So we used base 64 here. So all I had to do was to feed all, just put all my images in one folder. And we just pointed to that folder path. So that was pretty easy. Uh, let's do some more testing. So uh, I am in the playground here. You can see we have selected 4.0. Uh, I just wanted to do something. Uh, so this is gonna be a bit of a live live stream, <laughs> uh, kind of. So let's do like a triangle and let's do like six, two, and four, right? And let's try to screenshot this. Yeah, that was an image of me. And let's save this and upload it and ask. Can it do any calculations on this? What math calculations can you perform on this image? So what I was thinking is Pythagoras, right? So let's see what happens here. So I guess we can also check out the latency now. Should be pretty, pretty quick. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty fast. That's much faster than GPT-4, right? Uh, here are some calculations we can perform. Verify the triangle inequality theorem, okay? Uh, check if it's a right triangle using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, that's good. This is not a right triangle. Calculate the area. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Uh, fuel calculations have been performed. So yeah, that, I guess that was a pass. Uh, let's just try something different. Let's check out the speed a bit because now we have this latency down here, right? And we can see the token count and um, yeah, the latency. So let me set something up here. So now you can see we kind of are comparing GPT-40 with GPT-4 Turbo, right? And we're going to go right to three paragraphs about the life in Paris in the 1800s. So let's check out the latency now. Wow, that's a big difference. Kind of reminds me almost of Grok this. That was pretty cool. Uh, let's do a calculation here, uh, token per second. I think we're looking at something like 100. And oh, it's slow. <laughs> 
God. We just have to wait. And then we can do it. 23 seconds. That's four times faster at least. Almost five times faster. And it only and it brought less tokens. So let's do a quick calculation here. So let's just do it like this. So latency, latency and tokens. Okay. So you can see GPT-4. Oh, 110 tokens per second. GPT-4 Turbo, 20. So that's over five times faster. So that's pretty impressive. That's kind of what they advertise. So I'm pretty impressed by that. Five times faster. That's a big difference. If we have the same reasoning capabilities, I think that's a huge, that's a huge deal, right? So yeah, pretty exciting. So 110 tokens per second. Yeah, that's good. Let's also do some small logical tests. So let's just take some of the problems we had uh, in the previous videos. Okay, so this is kind of the marble problem. So this is a problem we uh, borrowed from um, Matthew Berman. I guess you've seen his YouTube channel. I just asked him if we can test it out. It's not his problem, but yeah. Just nice to ask him. He's a great guy and a good channel, so go check him out. I guess you probably have heard. So this is, uh, assume the laws of physics uh, on Earth. Small marble is put into a normal cup. The cup is placed upside down on a table. Uh, someone takes the cup without changing its orientation and puts it inside the microwave. Where is the marble now? So, of course, the, cup, the marble is uh, left on the table, right? Or something like that. So let's compare this with uh, GPT-4.0 and GPT-4 Turbo and see if it can solve this. Let's just check the settings here. Uh, yeah, they are the same. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so GPT-4.0 says the marble is now on the floor of the microwave. Uh, the marble remains inside the upside down cup now sitting on the microwave tray. So nope. Either GPT-4.0 or GPT-4 Turbo got this one correct. Uh, let's try another problem. Write 10 sentences that end with the word apples. So let's try that. Uh, apples, apples, party. Apples, 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 apples. So it got 9 out of 10. Let's say GPT-4 Turbo. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, that got every single one correct. So that one I have to give to GPT-4 Turbo. I don't know. I can't really say much about the performance of GPT-4.0 now. It's too soon for me. So just fun to do some logical testing, right? But yeah, I think that's actually it for me now. Uh, of course, we're going to follow up on Wednesday with a video on GPT-4.0 when I kind of had the time to look more into it. But this was kind of just my first reaction. So I thought it was pretty cool. I liked the stream. Uh, I thought it showed up some pretty interesting things. Uh, but of course, we have to explore more. Uh, there's a bunch of examples here you can take a look at. I thought that was pretty cool too. But yeah, uh, exciting. I think so. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I think it was pretty cool that if everyone gets this for free. Uh, but what happens when we pay? Well, let's just wait and see about that. Uh, other than that, yeah, have a great evening and we speak again on Wednesday.